Hi everybody and welcome to the next video in my series on my complete workflow for building a website. Now I want to start setting up my SaaS and because it's not a regular project, it's a SaaS project, I have some variables to do so this video is just all about setting up some of my basic variables for my colors and my fonts and creating a really really simple mix in that I'm going to use for my fonts throughout this project. Um, so the one thing I have done that I'm skipping just because I don't think it uh, requires too much is I did create a new vendor folder because I forgot to do that originally and in there I've put in normalize. So if we go and look, it's just the regular normalize file. I've copied it from normalize, pasted it in here, uh, though I did make some minor changes to it. I changed the font family from just sans serif to Roboto because that's the font I'm going to be using on this video or in this series. Uh, and I added the font weight in there. Uh, and I also modified the default line height to 1.6, which is a line height that I generally default to because I think it's 1.15 in normalize, which for me is kind of tight. So that's the only changes I've done uh, with that. So if I go there, if I look at my main SAS file, I've imported um, my normalize. And I've added my Google font uh, import all the way right at the very, very top. Um, if you're not familiar with SAS, what this is doing is it's importing my normalize file there uh, into this. And then it's exporting that into my main.css file here. So you can see when I go to my regular CSS file, I have the, the normalize in there and it's working. Uh, and that's all that's in my CSS file right now. But we're going to be adding a lot to that today. So the very first thing I'm going to, going to do is create a new file here and I'm going to save it and it's going to be in my SAS folder. It's going to be in abstracts and it's going to be uh, underscore colors dot S A S S and I'm going to hit save and right away I'm going to jump over to my main dot SAS and in here I'm going to do import abstracts slash colors. And I think I made a mistake somewhere. Ab, ab, abstracts. Ab, abs. Oh, I spelt. Let's rename that. Rename. Ab, abstracts. Uh, so that should. Main, I don't know if I can't pull this over. I'm getting a little pop up saying it can't compile my SAS right now. Uh, whoops, it didn't rename it, did it? Rename ab tracks. Um, so, what that is going to do, and we'll actually, we'll, I'll show you how that's working in one second actually. Um, these are things that aren't actual CSS. This is all just SAS. And if you are going to write in SCSS instead of SASS, and SCSS is more popular, if you're really not sure what the difference is, please use the notes below to find out a little bit more. Um, but the nice thing with SAS is you can do variables. These are a little bit different, I believe, when you're using regular SCSS. Um, so I'm going to do my main color, RGBA, and I've written all these out just because I don't, you know, I have them on the, my side here. Um, I don't want to have to sort of jump back and forth to Photoshop like I normally have. So I jotted all these down on paper, 168, 1, 100%. Um, so let's just, to show you what this variable is doing, let's just jump over to my... Uh, normalize file just really fast on the body we'll throw on a background of main do, do, do. did I make a mistake here oh whoops uh, this is all uh, I'm gonna delete you uh, because I've made a spelling mistake originally uh, move to trash I was renaming that in the wrong spot uh, I have two folders here now, colors and colors. I want to delete this one. And it might not work. Oh, it did work. Okay. So we're in the right place. We're not in the right place. This is, okay. Copy. Don't save. Well, that was a bit of a mess. Uh, all of that was just because I'd misnamed my uh, folder there. There we go. <laughs> uh, so because I'd misnamed this folder and I was working off of the wrong one, I didn't have my R 
uh, and then I renamed the wrong thing and I was renaming up here in the CSS and it was all a bit of a mess. I'm really sorry about that. So basically what I've done now is I've created a variable called main uh, and that's exporting to RGBA and those numbers and that gets exported and right now I've just said that my background color is main and I'm going to leave that there just so we can look at the different colors that I bring in. Uh, I'm also going to have a secondary color. So my secondary color, um, oh I just stick to RGBA out of um, habit I guess, uh, 147 and 100% and to show you what that color looks like, secondary and there we go it loads in as my bright green uh, another one I always have is my accent color, which is RGBA 211, 24, 105, 1. Uh, so we can look at that one as well, accent, which is that bright pink color. Uh, I also like to have a white color, white just because I probably will need it somewhere. RGBA, I don't know why we need the A, 255, 255, 255. Um, and now what I like to do as well is I like to uh, have my text colors, so text colors. And I will have my text base, and I'll do all of these in a second. Text inverse text accent and my text secondary. Uh, let's just switch that over to main just so it makes a bit more sense. Uh, so my main text my color, my inverse text color, my accent color, and my secondary text color. Um, and the reason I like to set this up like this and not just rely on these colors is because maybe I want to keep these colors but something along here changes. But for the moment these all stay the same. Uh, secondary. My main text color is my secondary color. My text inverse is white. My uh, text accent is accent. And my text secondary is main in this case. Uh, so these are just in, you know, I'm switching those around. But my main text color happens to be secondary. So that won't change anything. I'm going to jump in and normalize and take this out because I don't want to keep that in there. It was just to uh, give as an example and show that it is working. And I believe that's it for my colors. Uh, the next file that I'm going to create, and let's try not to screw this one up. We'll make a new one. Uh, I'm going to save that in my SAS, abstracts, spelt correctly. And this one, I call it type.sass. And as usual, I'll jump over to my main and I will import, import abstracts slash type. And in there, uh, I have a few things that I'm going to do uh, for my font. Whoops, fonts, that's fine. Uh, I don't like that, I like font. <coughs> I will have uh, my font stack with Roboto Sans Serif. And uh, right away, before I forget, I'm actually going to come into my normalize and switch that out. Save. Uh, oh, and this one does need the semicolon at the end. Um, now, the reason I'm putting this here is this is my main one. Um, but now if ever I decide to change my font at one point, and this is, I guess, is my main font stack, but it's the only font that I'm using. So if it ever gets changed through it somewhere in this project, I don't have to start hunting through in other places. I just have to go into my abstracts folder where it's done and I can do one change here and I know wherever it happened to be used will be switched out. Uh, and this is more useful, I guess, if you have more, um, fonts than just one but it's still a good habit and something I'm used to doing. So my font weights I'm gonna have a few font light whoops uh, I'm, again I'm just gonna write these out and then we'll assign them. Uh, I always have my font normal font bold and my font black. Uh, just to jump back over to my main just so you know I have brought in those uh, those are the weights that I am using. 
uh, you might have more, you might have a font italic and font other things that really depends on your project. So font light is 300, font normal is 400, font bold is 700, and font black is 900. And again, the nice thing about this is it makes it super easy for me to go in and change at later times if I need to change these. Say I change my font black from 900 to 700 for whatever reason. I don't like that super black thing. I don't have to go through my whole project. This is the one place that will can control all of it. So I'm going to save that. Uh, and now I'm going to also put a mix in here. Some people or a lot of people with their SAS like to have mixins in an extra file, but this is my font mixin, and I only use it for my fonts. Uh, it's specific to my type, so I do like to keep it in here. Uh, for mixins with SASS, it's done with an equal sign. I forget how to do it with SCSS. Sorry if you are using that. Um, so my font, uh, this is the variable, will be the weight. And what this means is my font family, anytime I want to set it up, I can just use my font family and font stack. And so it's always going to set my font family to Roboto and Sans Serif. I know I've used Normalize to set it up, but uh, again, this could be very useful if you set, you know, I could have font family, comma, wait, font wait. Uh, and then my font family here could be, uh, or, set this up as font family and it could be a variable and you could change it based on whatever you want but in this case uh, I am only worrying about the weight so my font weight will be weight um, so I'll show you how I'm how I'm going to use this really well I'll show you how I'm going to use it right away actually um, so one way I could use that just to demonstrate a little bit of how it works uh, I'll do it just right here um, say for my or even let's let's jump up to normalize and actually use it properly because <laughs> I'm not doing it properly here. So uh, I'm going to delete that whole line there. What I need to do is do a, at include include uh, font. My font was uh, font normal. Put my semicolon and I think that's going to work. Uh, so looking at this here, it's using my, it's going to my mixin and it's looking for font. So it's finding font and it's setting the properties. So it's setting my font family to my font stack and it's setting my font weight to my font normal. So basically nothing's changed. Now just for fun, if I change the font normal here to font bold, everything should become bold. There we go. And if I change my font bold to uh, font light, everything should become light. There you go, you see it become light, and I'll switch that back to normal. Um, so I like having something like this. Again, now if I changed my font stack, it would automatically update. If I change my font normal to something else, it will automatically update. I don't have to go and find where I'm using it. Uh, if I did want to modify this, I could always come and modify it a little bit to have it work a bit differently. You could have it include more variables. It's not necessarily set up to only two. Uh, I could put in as many as I want here. I could also have my font size and other stuff um, added in here. Uh, yeah, so that's it for setting that up. And that makes more sense for me for that to be set like that. So I'm going to close normalize. I won't need that anymore. So I have my fonts and colors all set up and ready to go. My mixin is ready to go. And that's it for my variables. I think that's all the ones we are going to need. It might be that I jump in here as time goes on, but I'm pretty happy with that. That's the general type of thing I do for most of my projects. And uh, a lot of this is what repeats itself. My font mixins are usually a little bit more complicated, but for this project, something simple like this is perfect. And yeah, if you've never used SAS, variables are super cool and they've started bringing variables into regular css but i find it's a bit of anyway i prefer how uh, this works i also like being able to have you know all my different files that i'm importing into one main file i find that makes a lot more sense too if you have any questions about variables or mix-ins or anything like that please leave them down in the comments below and I hope you liked this video. It was a kind of a short one, but I wanted to keep it focused. So if you did like the video, please hit like. If you haven't yet subscribed and you're watching these, hit the subscribe button so you can follow along with this whole project because I think it's gonna be a fun one. The website will look pretty cool when we're done. And that's it for now and see you in the next video.